Howdy, y'all. This is the Hickabilly Polite coming to you today. And have I got a story of a story to tell you today. So, me and the missus, we enjoy camping because we live out in the country and there ain't nothing to be seen. So, we figure we go camping and see what our fellow campers are doing. And we got all done. We enjoyed the day. And we decided before we leave town, the wife is like, you know, are you kind of hungry? And I said, yeah, as I am. And she says, how about let's get in some fish? And I'm like, yeah, who's going to say no to fish? So we ended up getting ourselves some fish. And she likes to sometimes drive while she's uh, eating. So that's fine, too, because I got my hands free to go start eating, you know, the fillets and all that other stuff. And so as I'm getting ready to eat, and you can't tell me you never had this feeling. But the feeling came on. And I'm like, oh no. And it's like, I got to do a number two. I mean, I got to poop. And I mean, when that feeling hits you, you know how it is. It's like, oh my goodness, where's the nearest bathroom? Well, by that time, we already was out of town and we was driving in the country. And I'm talking about, man, you got maybe about... uh Ooh, maybe about 30 minutes of nothing but country driving. So it's pretty pretty sad, you know what I mean? I mean, you can't even look for maybe a gas station. And even if you did, you wouldn't want to go into the gas station. Because I think you've been down that road too. So anyways, as, you know, the feeling came on. And I'm like, oh no, I don't want to say a word. Because if I say something or whatever, it's going to want to come out. And I don't want that to happen. Well, wouldn't you know it? The wife, who never likes to talk while we're driving, she decides she wants to hold a conversation. And I, I'm afraid to say anything because I'm afraid one word come out and it's going to come out on the other end, too. So she'd be over there sitting and she's saying, why are you keeping so quiet? And I said, nothing. I'm fine. Why aren't you eating? Uh, I'll eat when I get home. I mean, it was like I tried small little one to two word for sentences, because I was just so afraid. So as I'm keeping trying to keep quiet, man, it never fails too, man. Did you ever see or feel so many bumps in the road? Because, I mean, it's like, boom, and it's like, oh, man, that one was a bad one, but I held it together. Well, anyways, I start praying to God. I said, Lord, please let me hold it this long, you know, or let the feeling go away. Well, wouldn't you know it, the feeling goes away, and I'm like all happy, and I'm about ready to eat my fish, and it's like the devil himself will say, oh, no, you don't, because then that feeling hit with a vengeance, and I put that fillet of fish down, and I was like just quiet again. I'm like, oh, my goodness, it's starting up again, and it's like, please, Lord, please let it go. Well, you know, I think you, like I said, you've been there. It goes in the waves. One minute it's there, and it's like you got to go, and you're holding it as much as you can. And the next minute, the feeling goes away, and you're like, oh, goodness, man, I feel so good. Well, it come by again, so I get panicky because it's starting to get bad. I mean, my, my stomach is hurting me, and I'm like, oh, man. So I start looking in the fields, you know, not for bean fields, you know. Them beans, they don't do nothing for you. I mean, they just get your fingers all kind of nasty and everything. So I was looking for the corn, you know, so that they got the silt so that you could run real quick, you know, hide in the corn. You know, you may get a little buggy, but who cares at that point? And you run in the thing and you start peeling the corn, even if it ain't ready, you know, to get ready. Well, guess what? Harvest time hasn't come yet. All there is is a field of dirt. And I'm telling you, I'm looking at, at the dirt, and I'm like, there ain't no way I'm putting dirt up there. No way, because they got them rocks sometimes with it, and you know what rocks can do to hemorrhoids. And I was not about to get no hemorrhoid acting up. And then besides, there ain't no place to hide. Now, what am I going to do, stand in the middle of the field where everybody can see me and bend down? And But you know what, when you get desperate, you may end up doing it anyway. But I, lucky I never had to worry about that, because I'll tell you what, man. If if I ever had it that bad, man, I'd be like hiding behind the car or something. There ain't no way I'm going out in the field for people to watch me, you know. So anyways, I was getting desperate. So I'm over here with the Texas real quiet life now, you know, because I don't want to get myself all up, all worked up or anything, you know. And I, I text my son and I said, man, I'm about 
15 minutes away. You need to get that door open right away because when I come up, man, it's going to shoot out like a rocket. And I mean, it's going to be bad. And he's, you know, okay, Dad. And he's just laughing, going to tell jokes and everything. And I don't think none of this is, is funny. And then all of a sudden, you know, I still didn't tell the wife. And then I'm sitting over there and I was kind of like getting straight with my back and tightening it up. And the wife is like, what's wrong with you? I said, nothing. I said, I just stretching my back. It just got a little kink in it. And I'm just, you know, doing all kinds of crazy things, moving around to try to get the feeling away. Well, finally I had to tell her, I says, hun, I said, I got to go poop and I got to go bad. I already text the son. I said, he going to have the door open. He better have the door open. By golly, he going to have the door open. I says, so we got to get home as quick as possible. Well, wouldn't you know it? It seemed like, I can't guarantee it that she did this, but it seemed like she had this little grin on her face, and it looked like she went down in speed instead of up. I'm like, man, I hope she ain't joking around, because this ain't no time to joke, because it's getting worse, and it's getting intense. And when it gets intense, man, I don't know what to do. I mean, I'm shaking, my legs are shaking, and everything is going on, and I just don't know what to do. So... She pulls up finally, and I'm like, oh, this is no time to relax, because if I relax, I did this once. Oh, well, I didn't mean to tell on myself, but I relaxed one time before, and I'm telling you, when you relax, it just all comes out, and you don't want that to happen, especially if you don't have vinyl seats. But anyway, forget that. So I'm over there, man, and she pulls up, and I'm trying to get out of the car as fast as I can, but I'm afraid to go any faster, because if I go any faster, it's going to come out. So I'm sitting over there, I'm kind of tippy-toeing in a Russian kind of way, and I get over to the door, and, oh, man, I got to thank you, son. You left the door open for me because I was I was going to be mad if that door lock was locked. So I get up there, and, of course, I'm trying to get up them stairs, you know, to get up into the kitchen, and I'm like, get out of the way. There better be nobody in the bathroom. So I go running. That, that, that. Now I get confident because I'm really close. I go running and I close the door right away and I sit down and, like I said, it shoot it out like a rocket. But man, there's nothing like that feeling after it's all done. So I tell you, man, it was it was a, a, a wonderful day. And when I got done, then I was able to wash my hands. I had to go over there to the microwave and microwave my fish. And I had to finally eat my fish because I couldn't eat it before because I was afraid I ate it. It was going to push out, you know. So anyways, all I can tell you is I appreciate you listening to my story. I know you've had the same effect and the same story to probably tell yourself because we all have. But I thank you for listening. Don't forget to hit that like button. And God bless and See you next time.